Hello, I'm Tina Souser, and welcome to this week's Wednesday webinar. This is the third video in a series on Seesaw, and today we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of the tool itself and talk about um, how you can use some of those tools with your students in your classroom. So I am logged into my Seesaw account. And I just want to talk a little bit before we get into the tools for CESA um, about a little of this information over here. When you have new items come into your class, you will get notifications and there'll be a little red one or two, how many notifications you have for the day on that sign. And then you can come in here and you can check through your notifications. And... Um, read through each one. Back here you can add an item directly from this screen. You could click here to go back to your feed view which is the original view that comes up. The calendar view is kind of nice as well because in the calendar view it will show you all the posts and so I'm going to go back to August because that's when um, I made the most posts. So if you look down here on August 30th and 31st on August 30th, there's one item. On the 31st, there's six. So I'm going to click on the 31st. And when you do that, those items show up on everything that was posted for that day. And underneath each item, it shows you what student posted what. So that's always a nice view to, to see as a teacher if you go back to that calendar view. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go to the class feed. And then we're going to start talking about some of the tools here in Seesaw. Okay, let's start looking at some of the tools in Seesaw that are both accessible to the teacher and to the students as they join the class. Um, and then we're gonna talk about how those tools can be applied to your Seesaw account and to your classroom. So there's two ways as a teacher that I could go and add an article in here. Remember earlier we went back here and we said add an item. But a student or a teacher has the option over here in this green plus. So when I click on that green plus, I get six different options of items that I can add into Seesaw. This is, this is also what shows up on the student account exactly. So I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to select the photo. Um, when you first select the photo and your microphone, so you just allow that screen where I can take a photo so I'm gonna... and if I like it I can leave it if I want to retake it I'm, that was an awful photo so I'm gonna retake it and I just retake the picture and then when I'm ready to use that picture I can click this green check mark this green check mark is, is important in each one of those features because in order to apply something to the article you have to click the green check mark to move to the next step. So I'm going to click the green check mark because I want to use this picture. So when I do that I get these options down here at the bottom and this looks exactly the same for your students as it does for the teacher. I could rotate the picture. I think I look better upside down. <laughs> I could add audio to the picture and this is a really cool feature so when I click on the audio it's going to give me the option now it's going to ask you probably again to allow the microphone for the first time but it's going to give me the option to record my voice over top of this picture so I'm going to click record and hello my name is Tina thank you for watching Seesaw 3 as you saw, there is a screen that comes up at the bottom that shows you the recording time. Now, once you do that, it's going to allow you to listen to your recording. Now, if you want to use that, you can um, click again on the green check mark or you can re-record. I'm going to click on the green check mark to go to the next one. Um, and once I do that, as you can see, it has now applied that audio to my picture. And so they're tied together. Now, the next option in there is drawing. So when I click on the drawing, I get some more features down here at the bottom. I can click on different pen size. I have a pencil, eraser. I can 
type a label in there, I can erase all by one click, and I can choose different colors for my pencil. So I'm just gonna draw a nice little hat on me here. Cover up my messy hair. So again, if I like my drawing, I will click the green check mark, but I can also go down here, I can erase, or I could add a label right from here if I chose to, but I'm gonna click that green check. And now, as you can see, my drawing is added. Um, then I get the, the option to label. So I can add a label to my picture. And once I add that label, I can then um, drag it, resize it, whatever I want to do. And I believe I can change the color of the text this way. Um, I could change the style of the text box. Um, just about anything I want to do there. And I can also, from here, I can label and change size, pattern, all these options are available to you um, to change. So I could change the background color um, if I choose any of those options. So once I have it the way that I want it, I click the green check and then it's gonna apply that. Now, one other thing, so right now I have an audio tied to that picture, I have a drawing, and I have a label. I can also add a caption. Okay, and when I'm done typing, I click the green check mark again, and as you can see, that caption comes up underneath the picture. So when I have that all done, I can then click on this green check and then it's gonna ask me who do I want to apply this to. Now, since I'm in the teacher's account, I get the choice to apply it to everyone. If I apply it to everybody's folder, that will go not only to the students, but to the parents, and so everyone will see it in there. So you gotta be careful with using names um, and things like that when you share with everybody. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna apply it to this student, and so I'm gonna select that student, and again, I'm gonna go back to this green check, and then, because I have folder set up, it's gonna ask me where do I, what folder do I wanna put that in? And I'm gonna click that, and again, the green check mark. Now, because I am in the teacher's account and signed in as the teacher, that will automatically show up in the feed. If I was in a student account and I did the same thing, uh, the teacher, before that would show up in the feed, the teacher would come back here and see the notification. There'd be a little red one here that would show up. And then the teacher has to go and accept that before it's ever posted on the feed or even to that student's account. So the teacher can accept or deny that. Um, but again, it posted it right away because I'm actually signed in as the teacher. Now let's talk about this a little bit because what are the implications for this photo in your class, this photo option in your classroom? One of the coolest ways that I've seen it used is a teacher, an art teacher was using it um, where the students would take a photo of their artwork and then they would record their voice telling about the media of their artwork and, and the process that they went through to create that piece of artwork. Um, this is a great way to involve two-dimensional projects, um, even to post tests, um, test grades. If you've graded them on pencil paper and you want the parents to see them right away, for a student, you, you could add a photo of the test. Um, it's, it's also a great way to share events that are going on in your classroom. Um, special events that you have, say if you do a distance learning connection with something, you could take a photo of the kids watching the distance learning and write up or record your voice telling about it. Photo is a great tool because you have all those other options once you load that photo in there. Um, and again, 
You can draw over top and so you could be labeling things. You could post a picture, say for instance, if you're studying the parts of a plant, you could post a picture of the plant of a plant and then have your students um, label the parts of the plant. That's a great way to use it as well. Um, and then another way to use photos is actually with progressive projects. So if you have a project that is a step-by-step -step project, the students can take a photo of each step of the way and then record their voice telling about um, the steps that they went through to get to uh, the product. Okay. So, and of course, there's many, many more implications for the photo tool there, but we're going to go ahead and go to the next one. And the next option is video. Now, I didn't mention in the photo tool, but because I'm working from a laptop, I only have the one-way photo. Um, on an iPad, I could actually flip that camera around. And so, um, for instance, in a kindergarten class, I could ask the students to go take a picture of different things that have different shapes, go find a square, go find a circle, um, go find the diamonds and things like that. And they could post those pictures within the Photos app because they could switch that camera around to take uh, facing the other direction. Now back to the video. When I click on video, I actually get two options. I could select or drop a file in that's already on my computer. So I could go out and find a video that I already have or I could actually record my own video right here in Seesaw. And it's gonna ask again for access to your camera and microphone you just allow. And once you do that, then again, you have the photo or recording capabilities come up with, um, again, I'm using my webcam in my laptop, but if I was on an iPad, I could do the switch around where I could record facing the other direction. Um, and then, to start recording, I just click in here and it counts down. Hello, this is Seesaw 3. Thank you for watching. And then I click finish. Once I finish that recording, it's going to take a moment to load the recording. And once it's finished, I am then allowed to review the recording. depending on how fast your internet is. There we go. Um, and then I can preview that video. And then again, I get the options. I can record again. I can say, okay, I wanna add this video. And it's not the best video, but I'm gonna go ahead and say add. You would be surprised at how selective your kids are. So when you do something like this, I would limit them to maybe one or two takes um, because they are very critical of themselves. And so they may end up re-recording way too many times. Um, so just be aware of that. Now, once I accept that video, I can then go in and add a caption. And if I like that caption, I can click the check mark. I don't have to add that caption if I don't want to, but I do have the option. And so then I'm ready to post it and I click the check mark again. And then I'm gonna go back Again, if I want to post it to everyone, so all the parents see, all the students see. Um, if I'm in a student account, I do not have that option. Um, but then I say who I want to post it to, click the green check, um, where I want it to go, if you have folders set up. And then it's going to put it again because I'm in the teacher account. It's going to put it right in my feed. If I was a student, I, it would ask for permission to post it first. Um, so how can you use the video feed in your classroom? I absolutely love this tool because this can really get your students involved. For instance, you could have your students create a how-to video. If you're learning something and your student, you have a student that you think really has the concept or ones that maybe don't, then you ask them to record themselves telling how to do something um, and then you can share it with the other class so they can use those videos too to learn. Um, you could use them in centers. 
You could also choose a student of the day and ask them to tell the parents about the objectives that you're, or learning goals that you're learning for the day. Um, you could also uh, use it as a fluency tool. So your students could read into the video or even the recording feature, and then they can go back in and um, add a caption with their name on it, but they could also then go and kind of critique themselves on how they did with fluency. And then I would revisit that same reading again um, after a few months and have the students critique themselves again. So the video tool is actually a very powerful tool. And again, teachers can use that to share things out that are happening in the classroom with um, parents. But again, if you post to everyone, you just have to be aware that you shouldn't use first and last names of your students um, and any identifying factors because you're posting it to every parent and every student. Okay, so let's keep going on. Um, with the tools. I'm going to go back to the plus sign. The next option you have is the drawing feature. When you click on the drawing option, you get the one that kind of came up over the picture, top of the picture, um, but you get a full drawing palette. And so one, one way that you saw this in a previous video is my daughter, I told her to write the letter. And so we'll just write the letter A. So I asked her to write the letter, and then I asked her to draw something that had that started with the letter A. And so she used the drawing tool to do this. And again, you have all these drawing features. I'm trying to use a mouse, so my drawing is not the best, I apologize. Um, but you have all these drawing tools then that they can use, and, and the drawing feature works really well on the iPad because you can use your finger to do the drawing. Um, but basically then they could draw and then once they're finished, they click with a drawing, they click on the check and then, so that's telling them that they wanna use the drawing. And then again, you have all these tools at the bottom. So this is where I had my daughter record the letter, the sound and what her picture was. A says A. Ah. A is for apple. And then it applies that recording. And again, if I want to apply that to picture, I click the check mark. And then I get all these options back. And so it might be a good idea if you go ahead and label the picture with the name. And as you can see, each time you select a tool, um, you get different options that pop up down at the bottom. So when I'm ready to use that again, like this, and then say that I wanna post it, and I'm gonna just post it to that student again. And that would be part of our reading folder. So then I click the green check mark, and then it goes in. So what are the other implications for drawings? There's lots of things you could do with drawings. Again, for instance, um, if you're focusing on letters or numbers or shapes, um, if you're studying parts of a plant, if anything like that, the kids can go in there and draw. The, the feature is a little bit easier to, to use on the iPad than it would be a laptop or a Chromebook because of the drawing the ability to draw with your finger. Um, but there is lots of implications that you could do with a drawing tool and all those pieces that come up with it. So let's go back here and we'll go down to the bottom row. This option will allow you to upload a file. And if you notice, it will only allow you to upload these types of files. So basically any pictures or something that is a PDF. If you try to load something else, it looks like it's gonna go, um, but it doesn't. So let me find something here. Those are all PDFs, not on my desktop. Um, oh, here we go, here's a PowerPoint. So if I try to load a PowerPoint, it's gonna say that type is not supported. Um, but if I go back, and I upload an image.
it will allow me to do that. And then what I have is the option to do all of these with that image. So I could add audio to my picture. I could draw over top of my picture. I could label it, add a caption, or rotate the picture. And so again, this is where kids could take, um, if they have a whole bunch of pictures that they've already taken, they could go in and upload them and put these captions back on. Um, say for instance, if you're working on that shape project, so go find these different shapes. Once the kids could go take all the pictures and then they could um, upload each one and label each picture. And so then they go through the same process of applying it to a student, a folder. Um, basically whatever they want to do. Um, but that's how you can upload a file from your computer. Um, but again, you're limited to pictures and PDFs. I can show you, let's take a look at what a PDF would look like here. So this might be something where um, you maybe have a PDF of your spelling words for the week that you want to post in there. Um, you could save them as a PDF and upload them into Seesaw and then both your parents and your students have it. Um, especially if you post to everyone, if you post to everyone that it'll go out. Or if you have a newsletter, this is a great way to do um, a newsletter. But the way that they would, parents would need to get into it is they would actually have to click on it and then um, they could scroll through the pages to see the rest of the PDF. And this is a pretty big one. Um, but again, if you did, if you saved your spelling test or something like that as a PDF, um, that's how that would come up for them. Um, and, and again, it's a great way to do newsletters or any other communication that you might do with your parents throughout the week. This, I really like this tool as well because um, this is where I like to post um, the objectives for the day or the things that we would work on for the day. Um, in an earlier video, I mentioned that my preschool daughter, whenever she comes home, I'll always ask her how her day was and what she learned for the day and she'll just always tell me she forgot. Well, as a teacher, each day I could come in here and post what we learned for the day and what we focused on for the day. So, for example, something short and simple like that. Um, you could make it even longer if you choose. But basically when you add a note, you just type in a short note, click on the this. You could add audio to that note. You could add text to that note. Um, when you click text, it just means you're going to go back and add an additional text. You could record your voice reading it. Today we learned about the letter S and the number 11. Um, and when you record your voice saying it, you could add more details like um, the letter S stands such as son or uh, Sammy, examples like that when you record your voice. So I'm going to go ahead and post that. And again, if that's something that you're going to post for parents, you're going to want to select that it goes to everyone. And that will go to students and parents of the students. And it will be posted in the feed for everyone to see. Um, and that is the note option. And of course, there's lots of different options you could do with the note. Uh, you could even do vocabulary words and, and spelling words here in a note feed if you choose. If you did spelling words, it'd be a great for you to add the audio with that as well so the students can hear the sounds and hear the words as you say them. And then last, <clears throat> excuse me, last but not least is the link option. So let's say you were studying something about, um, we'll just go World War II. And there was a really great website or video. Um, actually, if you want to add the video, you go back to the video tool. But let's say you come to a really good website that you want parents to see. Um, because maybe the kids are asked to study it for the day. So all you do is you copy that URL, you go back into link, and you paste that URL into Seesaw, and then it actually comes up with a picture, 
And again, you have the option to record your voice over top. You, if you record your voice, you could give the assignment right here and you could say, um, students are asked to read this article and summarize in four paragraphs what it's about. If you record your audio on that, um, or you can add a caption. Um, if I add a caption, summary, and I click the check mark. So then again, if I record my um, audio, which would be part of the assignment. Students are asked to read this article and then in a short paragraph, either three to six sentences long to summarize what the paragraph is about. Now I have just posted an assignment for the parents to see. And again, if you're, you're wanting this for all students, you're going to do the green check mark and you're going to select everyone and then you're going to post that. And I might even have a folder here that would say social studies or um, that would say assignments or however you create your folder. Let's, let's create one that just says social studies so it makes sense and so you can see the folders. And we'll just choose a different color. And then I have that fol folder in there and that's where I'm going to put that assignment. And then it's gonna post that assignment to everybody but it's gonna tie it to that social studies folder here. Um, again, there are lots of implications for that. Um, just depends on how you use links and websites in your classroom. A great way to put links in there too is if you have a school website. Um, that you want to share out with your parents or if you have created a site of your own that you want to share it with parents That's a great way to do it If you work a lot in Google Drive or Google Docs and you want to share some of those details with your parents That's another way to include those items into Seesaw um, it, Even if the te if the students work in classroom and they create those assignments you can still share those assignments via the link in the link tool in Seesaw and that will still go to their parents. Now Seesaw obviously is a wonderful tool um, and it's a great parent communication tool but you could also use all of these articles if you go back to the students themselves you could use this during parent teacher conferences. So if I go to this student right here, let's say that that parent's coming in for the day and I go through and I click on that student, I can go through every assignment that was posted in there and talk about each one of those um, and their, the importance of each assignment. And we could talk about how their students are doing because it would be pro progressive. So the ones down here at the bottom, for example, um, when I had, my daughter read these, I would probably go through and do that again right before parent-teacher conferences, read that same one, and then compare how much they have improved, um, including the fluency ones would be great. Um, but these are just great discussion points for parents during parent during parent teacher conferences. And because you've already shared that with parents, you can have a, a richer um, collaborative instruction um, communication, but you could also invite the students to talk about their works in person during those parent-teacher conferences from their profile feed. So, um, and basically that's all I have for this version of Seesaw 3. Again, I love this tool as a teacher, I love this tool as a parent, and I love this tool as a tech person. Um, the tech side of it, I love the idea that it is uh, secure and basically your student feed goes only to their parents. Um, I love it from the parent side because I love the communication of the tool. I could see instantly what's going on in the classroom. I could comment back and forth um, to my student. Like if I post something on on one of their assignments, say I could say, way to go, this was awesome. Um, if, if I as a parent am posting to my students work, they're going to see that and, and it drives students to, to create and do their best 
especially when they know that this is going to be posted. But it, you can also pull in um, other students to comment and, and make those comments. And again, those comments have to be okayed by the teacher before they come in. So you could kind of filter through the negative, the inappropriate ones if you needed to. But the discussion should take place prior to the use of Seesaw that the purpose of it is to uplift each other and, and to have positive feedback. Now, I love this from the teacher perspective because it is so easy to use and you actually only need one device in your classroom. You could do this from one iPad or one uh, web connected tool in your classroom. Um, that would just be a situation where your students would probably have to rotate within a center um, to upload their artifacts into Seesaw. Um, but the best way probably to start with Seesaw is to get your parents connected and to start um, intriguing those parents with feeds that you give them um, from the teacher perspective. And then slowly, as you get comfortable, start pulling your students in to do the work and to do the posting themselves. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this.